Hello and welcome to the 94th episode of Rambling Weekly. How's it going? I hope it's been going well for you. It's been pretty busy for me in a lot of ways. The uh, I mentioned it in a post last last week about having family obligations. So, and I'll get into that with the topic more so. But um, I also had uh, I've been. I know I mentioned it in the previous episode, but uh, work has still been fairly heavy. Uh, it's been about a month, month and a half or so that for most of those weeks I've been spilling into overtime territory. So that has been uh, something. <laughs> I mean, a little extra money is nice, I guess, but I don't know. Uh, when you start pushing into it, uh, a lot more extra hours. It's like, okay, I, I don't want that so much. <laughs> um, I know also in that post, I had mentioned the being close to being done with part five. I actually just last night finished writing up the little script thingy for it. So, uh, to record, put the footage together and stuff. I have the footage recorded because that's how I go about doing this. It's like I'll play through um, and then maybe make some notes here and there and then mm, go through and write up some stuff. And I just with work and everything I really didn't have a good chance to uh, do that. So I was bit delayed into getting into it and then kind of got into it. It actually probably will be a little bit shorter than the other two, two, how about the other four? <laughs> the other four, um, not by a ton, but it is a little bit more focused. If, even if the, the focus is a little bit away from the main stuff that's going on. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, it was, it was good, good to be done with that. In the sense of at least writing out the script. And then I'll have part six. Woo! Exciting stuff. I'm, uh, I'm happy to finally be getting through it. And I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe it was not the appropriate way to go about it. And re releasing it in parts. But um, I don't know. If, I think I've said it before. But if not, I intend to kind of staple them all together. So that there isn't... So that there's just like a one big video for it and stuff so uh, yeah that's that is what's going on on that front uh on other fronts let's see i have uh i have been i guess re-going replaying through some of the, the the old games near and dear to my heart um randomly recently there was the update to doom one and two that's available on like Steam and stuff that adds in a whole new uh, chapter, Legacy of Rust, which I haven't gotten to yet. I've just been playing through, played through Doom 1 and uh, all four chapters, and then I, I've almost beaten Doom 2 before going to like the master levels and then Plutonia Experiment TNT. Um, and, and stuff like that. So I'm going through through all that. And then eventually I'll get to Legacy of Rust. And it's... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It is it is nice to have that... Um, like, the original Doom in particular is one of my favorite games. And uh, I just never get sick and tired of it. It is it is just a, a, a... It's a fun jaunt. Um so and I'm one of those maniacs who may not be like super great at the game but uh, I I don't play it on anything other than just ultra violence and just uh, <laughs> stress out <laughs> uh, I ain't a maniac enough to just blitz through everything like on, for nightmare but uh, I'm maniac enough to be like okay we're gonna go through this we're gonna weed out all the corruption <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's I've I've been going through that, and uh, I'm not as familiar with Doom Two uh, so much. So that one, I feel like, is a little eh at times compared, um, and maybe that's 
I don't know. Like I get it, super shotgun, super sweet. But there, there are some times where I'm like, this is, this is a bit of a slog. Particularly the middle parts with the the. The, like the factory and the industrial zone, the city stuff is a little bit of a bit of a slog. You're like, okay, uh, yeah, but I'm not looking forward to some things like in TNT with all the hit scanners and stuff. But uh, you make do with what you got. So, like uh, that, like I enjoyed it. A lot of the wads too that I have. So it's it is just something that's it's just really fun fun to play. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, so that. Oh, anything else really been going on? Uh, I don't, oh, uh, I don't. I mean, I, I think I could probably find a picture of it. But I got uh, little B Clark. Uh, he had a book come out through Limited Runs, uh, or Limited Run Games, and let me grab it real quick since it's right outside of arm reach. It is gameplay harmonies. Are we serious? Are we seriously doing that right now? <laughs> gameplay harmonies. Um, yeah, by uh, Brian Clark. So it talks about the. Uh, um, uh, oh, here, I'll just read the back of it real quick. Enter a bygone era of interactive entertainment when popular Japanese recording artists starred not only in films and music videos, but in video games as well. Although these works rarely appeared outside of Japan, they spanned a wide array of genres, including action platformers, adventure games, edutainment, and multimedia software. Often strange, always fascinating, these games mix pure creativity and bizarre design decisions. Historian and translator Brian Clark has broken down the surprising links between Japan's video game and music industries in a decade-by-decade -decade survey from the Nintendo Famicom to Sony's PlayStation 2 and beyond. Uh, I am not terribly far into it. I'm about 44 pages into it, which puts me at the uh, the start of the Sekima 2 chapter. So I'm uh, getting getting through that and stuff. So, but yeah, uh, it's neat. Uh, definitely, if you're interested in that sort of thing, give it a give it a look see I'm making a note right now to add in links so check out the links for it if you are interested um yeah boom Ta -da. uh that um let's see and uh, that's that's pretty pretty much it <laughs> like uh, there's some odds and ends i've been doing but nothing nothing too excessive so it's just like i said a lot of work and then especially for about a week um maybe just a tad bit more than a week it's been a lot of uh um stuff well i guess if anything you know i did another uh session of being the dm for a little tabletop thing last week and uh, people really seem to enjoy it so uh, I was happy, and hopefully that trend continues. So, but that's uh, that is that is what what I got for that. So we're gonna get into the topic here, and that is, uh, as I have so so titled it, the path of least existence. Da -da 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 -da. Um, and it kind of stems off of this games radar. Um, dot com. <laughs> website and uh this was put out five days ago by a con saren and the uh the title is <laughs> the title is not really much of anything you know what time out i gotta i gotta like clear my throat time out. time time all right time in um the title is ridiculously lengthy so we're not going to get into that it is <laughs> it is bordering isekai manga levels of length for a title but uh this is basically talking about sakurai being very apologetic to players who who uh, spent a lot of time playing his game aka smash brothers particularly smash brothers ultimate um but all of them in general so uh, yeah 
we're gonna just kind of read through it here. So the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and Kirby creator Masahiro Sakai says sorry to the players who have spent thousands of hours in his games. The apology comes courtesy of the famed director's most recent Creating Games episode in which he reconciles with the idea that a game's playtime is basically a cost that players need to weigh. Playtime, especially how it's conceived before starting a game, is better thought of as a sort of cost, he explains. In the modern world, you're constantly competing with everything else, Sakurai continues. It's a battle for people's time. Even if someone has lots of free time on their hands, that means something different now than it did in the past. There's always things to do. There's always things to do. The question is, how do people choose to spend that time? Uh, so, um... And then... Yeah, so there's there's a there is this is something that I've grappled with myself in uh, for a long time. I always really liked those really really lengthy like JRPGs. You get into Dragon Quest Seven, Xenogears, um, you know, Dragon Quest Eight. Uh, a lot of uh, it's a it's a it's a lot of time to be investing. You know, seven. I know I've played through it twice because I got about 90 some odd hours into it and then for God knows what reason stopped, <laughs> stopped. and then didn't come back to it until like two or three years later. It's like, yeah, I need to start this over again. <laughs> um, that's a lot of time. Even if you're not, uh, it's, it's a lot of time. It's one of those things when you're playing, it's like, do you try to invest like an hour a day on this sort of thing or what? Um, I, I, if I think of it that way, my brain goes to, um, back when I was a student and everything, either learning Spanish or Japanese way back in the day, uh, that, uh, I was always told, Hey, invest an hour a day in your studies. This I think is important. Even as you've got, even as you've grown and aged and whatnot, I think it's an important thing that anything you want to do, um, like, say, it's learn how to play the guitar, or play the piano, or paint, or something like that. Any sort of venture like that, to spend an hour trying to do that. Or at least set off, set a, like a block of time to kind of get the ball rolling. I do, I do this with writing as well, where it's like, I may, I, I do very much believe it's like, you know, editing a bad page is, there's, you know, editing a bad page is, is infinitely easier than editing no page when it comes to writing or, or you know it's, there's I'm paraphrasing it but there's something something of that uh, instead of just kind of letting it blank be blank and nothing to it you've got to like put it in step by step by step by step by step and go that route <clears throat> however with so many things just getting in in the way of everything um, it makes it a lot easier to just veg and not do things and not live life um and that doesn't necessarily mean you've got to go out and do crazy adventures and stuff i think that when you do that you lose the forest by staring at one very specific perhaps really pretty and interesting tree but you're you're just kind of looking at it drooling over it like oh that's really that's really that's really swell um do you you're you can like you, you don't have to have the great Oh, we're gonna go across the world or something, sort of thing. Travel adventure. You can still have small adventures. In fact, you should probably start with the small adventure, and then work your way up to those bigger ones, um, if feasible. And even if not, it doesn't take anything away from it, because the um, to kind of blow off the dust of a, a topic from way back when, our unspoken duty of kind of being. To do giving each other hope and stuff like that, um, to be supportive of one another. Um, I think uh, we do ourselves, our own selves, uh, disservice by um, thinking, well, I'm not going to be able to do this, so why should I bother? Or I'm fine with doing this. Um, I sh uh, that's this is fine. Um, and there's almost this like regression and I've seen this with my mother and this is where the thing I mentioned about bringing it up for the topic kind of comes in. My, my mother has a very bad habit of, and I, I'm not going to bring up her 
baggage on this sort of thing. But um, I've I've seen how um, events in life can make it so you become very you know, kind of go into hedgehog mode, and you just sort of do that um, with the advent of how everything is, with how life is um, nowadays. Uh, people f feel like if they're, and I don't know how, how true this may be, but the nexus of, if you, not nexus, but if you are in, if you are somebody who always is reaching out to everybody else and then seemingly nobody is really ever reaching out to you it can color your opinions certain ways um it's like well i guess they don't really care um and that i think probably can stem more from like a depressive state or just a very anti me state um and that's not necessarily the truth of it like people have a lot of obligations uh, i think we because of how decentralized everything is now with ability to travel large expanses we have we still have the mindset of everything's close-knit but that's not how it is nowadays everything is is at our fingertips but it's not necessarily that it, it's close-knit and um that's causing this this juxtaposition of how we've how we've evolved over over generations to what we've got now is uh, not quite quite meshing very well in certain ways so you feel like well you know if they're not talking to me it's that they don't care it's not that they don't care it's that they're being bombarded by a bajillion other things um or that they are busy living their life as should yourself um and whatever that is like yeah you know i'm not gonna uh, yeah, I, I've said it a few times. If, I think life is is one of those things where it's it is you should be doing, you should be choosing to to do the good. Um, I think that is, and whatever the good is doesn't necessarily mean um, babying or pampering people because you could kind of kind of like the paradox of hedonism. You could have you could be enjoying the the immediate but lose out in the long run of greater happiness because you're constantly feeding off of the immediate pleasures and, and whatnot. Um, and, uh, you know, there's also, I would say, like a, a quote-unquote drawback of, um, what, what do they call that? It's delayed gratification uh, because... Uh, you know, some people get it in their heads they'll hype something up and then all of a sudden once they have the thing they're kind of like oh that's it I didn't really <laughs> um, I guess that's the other side of the coin that should also be concerned about but more importantly um, is that uh, you, you do the good you, you help um, those in your life um, and, the, and I don't necessarily strictly mean like those constantly, but I, I, I'm very much in the mindset that you try to, you know, carry the carry the kindness forward, not necessarily pay it forward, um, but carry it so that uh, others can kind of try to pass that baton themselves. Um, think of almost like a oh, for whatever reason the future. Have, have Chrono Trigger, where they finally get start to uh, plant stuff again, um, comes to mind. Uh, you, know, you know, you don't know necessarily for certain if it, it works out. Um, you, you'd certainly hope and think uh, think it will, but um, duh? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Um, that's also been a minute since I played Chrono Trick. I don't remember if they actually definitively figured that out. It, things are rough in the future, so uh, there's a lot of bad stuff around. Um, so uh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> uh, but 
yeah, so uh, back to what I was saying about um, my mother is that so she would be very like she, she for a very long time would just kind of not really do much, um, you know, do do things, you know, but not necessarily beyond that. It was always the you know just do the day thing, just whatever, and then um, spend far too much time for my liking uh watching tv um and stuff she she's wrapped up and uh, she she loves her k dramas and chinese dramas and stuff like that and it's like okay all right yeah, please please <laughs> um however uh this, this is also why i was busy is that uh she actually ended up going on a trip with one of her friends for uh about a week she went out to uh, visit my brother who's been on the podcast before visited him out in uh in, in, out, out west and then went up into they were in wyoming and then into dakotas and all sort of stuff and um you know, she seemed to have a really good time uh and yeah, while that is a very extensive one and i get that like this is the pushback i get a lot of times and understandably so because there's been that meme about like traveling isn't a isn't a um what is the heck is it i know i'm gonna butcher it it's like traveling isn't an issue of money but um of courage and then people are like well you know i'll pay for my round round flight uh tickets through (laughs) through (laughs) through courage kind of thing um and and understandably so it's like kind of like yeah you know but there there is a tinge of truth to that in the sense of you know you have to have the courage or the impetus to tell yourself no like ah eh, uh, well i'm not gonna expend money on this that or the other i'm gonna tighten you know tighten my expenses so that i can free them up to make a trip however you don't have to do, make like some sort of crazy you know three-week adventure to to europe or uh go on safari or um uh, like the safari tours and, and stuff you can pare it down a bit and be like oh you know i'm gonna go uh, do this and i get it that you know jobs certainly make that difficult this is really really pretty much an impossible task for um people who are trying to like work two jobs uh and make ends meet and that's where uh, you have to pare things down. Um, I think though those situations, yeah, that that becomes really hard. So you have to like boil that into okay. So how can is there a way to have it be that I can take off uh, a Saturday or something or a Tuesday, and that be when you do. You know, whatever the reason why you're doing this, you're able to say for it. Say, for example, like a single parent trying to make ends meet for their for the kids. Like, okay, we've done that. So, I've I've cornered a day here. Then I don't have to work, and we're going to do stuff together. And sometimes it falls through because, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the 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 kids might be ungrateful little little turds, and uh, they might not uh, see it as a, a moment of spending time together. And it might drive you up the wall, and you're like, okay, not doing that again. Which I would hope not, but I I understand the sentiment. <laughs> but I think more than anything. Um, it is the, it is such a horrible thing to just kind of let your world become smaller and smaller and smaller, um, simply because you you don't really have it in you to want to go out or, and I get it like this, like I said before, the finances thing, that's always a tough one. Um, this is why I've, I've said before, it's like, you know, try to do a little bit of like a walk, try to, try to make the, the, the small adventure big in its own way. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to create some sort of great 
experience, but you know, perhaps you'll see some neat little little flower or you catch the sunrise or sunset or you see a very chunky robin just kind of sitting sitting all the you know sitting somewhere <laughs> and you're like that's a really fat bird how does that thing even fly <laughs> um and then you kind of go from that um that turns into your own little um uh, for lack of a better own little well to draw from i guess for inspiration and stuff um i just feel like if you if you regress into uh just sitting there and letting everything else be done for you and you're just sort of vicariously living through other people's um actions or or just having everything be projected onto you through television, internet, what have you, um, it makes for a very, um, for lack of a better way to put it, I think a very spiritually poor <laughs> existence. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know how, how else to phrase that. I like, it's similar with the, uh, uh the, Condemnation, condemnation that comes up with AI, especially with the AI artwork. So certainly there's a novelty and a neatness to being able to just kind of plug in prompts and then it, boom, it has something for you. Um, but there, there is something to be said about how somebody's experiences and just their way of seeing something um, be not only expressed but how they express it, right? So, and I think that's important. I think, yeah, as much as I love the, the photorealistic sort of artwork and stuff, um, there there is something when somebody puts pen to paper, brush to canvas, or even um, taking a picture of things, that there is, uh, there, there is, an expression in that that um, gets lost when it's something like AI uh, where yeah you can plug in to be like yeah make it like the French expressionist period um, yada 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 that sort of thing but uh, I don't I think it does a disservice um, and uh, I think that is oh, part of what was the big uproar for AI, it seems like it's kind of calmed down a little bit, um, but I think it's 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 simmering there, and <laughs> you do see it with I think what was that? Was it the coast got into a little bit of heat for having something that was AI generated for their artwork, and then they're like, oh, oh, oh our bad, and then they kind of flipped it out. I, I think that's uh, as long as people remain ever vigilant on that front, but. Um, yeah, uh, uh, that's that's kind of kind of what I got for for this episode. I I, I don't know. I think it's I, I I think that's what we should really be doing for ourselves is living a lot more than than we tend to do, and I don't think it is in our best interest to do that by being bombarded or to just kind of give our time so uh, so uh, freely <laughs> it's like uh, um, you know you, ha you have to ha know the value of your own sort of existence and I guess if, if you don't feel that way I think it's kind of easy to just sort of slide into that and to just kind of just be in stuck because I, I mean there's a lot of those uh, I don't know how to put it stereotypes of like how people were just regressed and just watching TV all the time I remember this as a kid it'd always be like that fat old old man drink, have his like beer cans and stuff and just sort of yeah, yeah this is his, that's his existence right there and I feel like we've inadvertently or, or um 
uh, the unconsciously slid into that uh, stereotype and haven't realized that we need to kind of yank ourselves out of it and um, in a zeitgeist sort of manner, not, not necessarily individualistically, right? Uh, painting with broad brush strokes. Um, so, but yeah, I don't know. That's, that's also why I, I tend to try to not be too... Uh, how to put it Ex excessively about on uh, on the YouTubes and stuff um, yeah I don't know I, that's, I think I uh, try to bounce to doing other things uh, so that's, that's why I pop in uh, I've been pretty consistent I think for the last year uh, this, this is probably the most active I've ever been <laughs> for better and for worse uh, with with YouTube and such, so yeah. Uh, but this, that's I guess that's all I got for this one. Um, the outro is going to be a uh, song from Zero Ranger, and if you don't know what Zero Ranger is, it is a uh, an indie. I don't remember exactly when it came out, but uh, it was an indie top-down vertical shooter I, I think I think that's how, how it's called but uh, the big thing was it was done with like four colors I think um, white or at least uh, four main colors and then some different shades of it but like white orange green and black um, it's really it's a it's a pretty game uh, and it came out like uh, it looks like it came out about six years ago but uh, it, it's fun. I don't play it very often. Uh, in fact, I've really only slowly started to get back into it. And by into it, I mean I'll play it like once or twice. And then I'll be like, okay, before I get frustrated with this. Because <laughs> I still haven't beaten it proper. But um, it is it is fun. Soundtrack's really good. Most of the tunes are by an E. Brosky. I think that's how you say it. And uh, the outro for this one is going to be Dreamlike Reality. So uh, that's 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 what I got. So thanks for listening. Enjoy your day, weekday, weekend, weeknights, and everything in between. And I will hopefully catch you next week. Toodles.